going on everybody? Uh, Mike here again with another Kerbal Space Program video. Uh, my first video I touched on, you know, the basics of the game, controlling a rocket and uh, actually getting a ship into orbit. Um, I didn't really touch on any one of these subjects um, really all that extensively, so I thought I'd make a couple more videos to touch on some important topics that uh, will help you get the most out of this game. So for this video, I'm going to touch on mainly orbits, orbital maneuvers, maneuver nodes, and some of the, the different nuances of controlling your ship while in orbit. Um, so if we look here, we're actually at the main map screen of the tracking center. Uh, if I go back um, real quick to this, uh, the main screen of the space center. Come on, load. You can load. There you go. So if we go back to the main screen of the Space Center, um, you know, we have our VAB and our launch pad. But I'm actually clicked into this building over here. This is the Tracking Center. Um, and that brings up this map screen that shows you all the ships that are in orbit as well as, you know, anything else. So we're in my uh, main save file right now. I've got, I think, about 11 things. 11 things going on right now. Uh, we can see a few of them right around the planet here. Uh, I've got a ship right here that's actually in orbit, just kind of floating. And over on this side, I've got a space station. And then I've got a satellite that's on a bit of an inclined orbit. See how the orbit that it's following is actually pretty angled. Uh, we'll talk about uh, you know orbital inclinations and whatnot later. But... Um, <clears throat> To highlight some different things about orbits and whatnot, uh, we're going to actually fly this guy. So let's fly this ship. Alright, so here we are. Oops, let me get rid of this stuff. We don't need that. This is uh, a ship that I built. Um, it's got a bunch of fancy bells and whistles on it. Uh, I mainly built it to be a uh, interplanetary ship so this is capable of going to Duna and things like that uh, different planets in the solar system uh, but for right now it's uh, you know pretty well equipped to just kind of demonstrate orbital maneuvers so we've got a ship in orbit that's basically floating around the planet it's in an orbit um, at about 155 kilometers so we're fairly stable in our altitude and um, some things I didn't really touch on last video when it came to the orbits were the different apses, okay? So for every orbit, you have an apoapsis and a periapsis, collectively known as the apses. These correspond to the highest and lowest point in your orbits. So the apoapsis is your highest altitude point, and the periapsis is your lowest altitude point. And the reason that these points exist is because every orbit is slightly, it's slightly oval. It's not a perfect circle and will never will be. It's in, in the real world, it's, it's mathematically and physically impossible to have a completely perfectly circular orbit. So every orbit will have an apoapsis and a periapsis. Um... And uh, we use these as reference points for our highest and lowest uh, points in the orbit because it just so happens to be that if we ever want to make changes to our orbit, these two points are the best points in which to do it. The reason for that is because at these points, depending on the maneuver that we want to do, we actually have to burn less fuel in order to do it because we're already at an extreme in the orbit and we're just going to be modifying the opposite extreme, so it has more of an effect. Now, I could do an orbital maneuver anywhere to make changes to the orbit, and that's perfectly fine. It just uses up a bit more fuel in the process. So, while we're on that subject, changing our orbit. So, right now, our orbit is pretty stable at 155 km, like I said. We have our apoapsis here at 156, 530 something and our periapsis is at 155, 630 something. So this orbit is pretty circular. Like there's really not a lot of deviation between the two points. They're pretty close. 
one thing that can happen in Kerbal Space Program is if, um, and this is just an issue with computation things and floating point numbers, things of that nature, but if the orbits are too circular, these points can kind of freak out in this map screen, and it can just kind of cause hosts of issues. Um, it's generally not something most people are going to need to worry about, but when uh, people are... Uh, you know, getting really nitty gritty with their orbits and are trying to create extremely circular orbits, it can sometimes cause a problem. And uh, I've actually had the game crash when an orbit kind of became too circular and the game really didn't know where the different apses were at. Um, but uh, we're not going to have to worry about that. So as I was saying, uh, with regards to changing our orbit, let's say we want to increase our orbital altitude. We want to make this orbit, this circle around the planet Kerbin, bigger. Meaning we want to be out here instead of where we're currently at. So how do we do that? Well, we can do one of two things. The simplest way, and uh, in a map screen we can bring up our nav ball down here, the simplest way is to simply point our nose at the prograde vector. So our, our current velocity vector, which is noted by the green symbol down here. We basically simply have to point our nose at that, and then we just need to fire our engines. And what's going to happen is we're going to be increasing our speed it's going to start to fling us away from the planet. So what you would see happen is on the opposite side of the planet, from the position where we initiate the burn, the orbit is going to grow. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to quick save my game. And I'm going to do exactly that. I just want to, I'm going to go in here and make sure my engine is actually activated. There we go. Now it is. Um... All right, so we're pointing prograde. And yeah, we just want to burn to make our orbit uh, to make our orbit bigger. So here we go. And I'm going to be looking kind of top down at this so you see what happens. And throttle up. And there we go. You can see the blue line is actually extending out on the opposite side of the planet. It's getting bigger, getting bigger, getting bigger. All right, cool. We'll just kill it right there. So we've extended the orbit on that side. Now, what we've really done is we've raised our apoapsis. Now, since we burned at a place that wasn't actually at an apsis at that point, our apoapsis and periapsis moved. So the periapsis is literally right where I am now because that's the lowest point in the orbit relative to Kerbin and the apoapsis is now farther out into space. Now, there's one problem with this. Uh, we have to do a bit of another maneuver to circularize this. If you look, it's a little tough to see, but you can actually see it. Um, if you look, this orbit is a bit oval. It's a bit oval-like. We don't like that. We like our orbits to be nice and circular. We like our apses to be pretty close together. So right now, <clears throat> the um, the orbit needs to be circularized. So what, how do we do that? Remember what I was talking about when it came to performing maneuvers at the different apsis points? What we're going to do, and I'm going to demonstrate maneuver nodes here, uh, I briefly demonstrated maneuver nodes in the first video, but I didn't really go into them uh, a whole lot. But we're going to create a maneuver node. So we do that by clicking. And uh, I'm actually going to, there we go. That just keeps things a little bit simpler. My focus, my camera focus is now on the planet rather than the ship, which is fine. Um, we're going to create a maneuver node at this point. So we just click on the blue line we see this little menu pop up and we click add maneuver and then now we see this it's kinda tough to see we see this little thing down here now what is that those are that is the maneuver node and the little symbols that surround it are the uh, maneuver anchors 
And as you can see, we've got two familiar icons here. We have the prograde vector and the retrograde vector. And if I click and grab this and actually pull on it a little bit, you see the yellow dotted line actually extends out. Right? So what that is basically telling us is if I do a prograde burn for a certain amount of time at this point, it's going to extend the periapsis of my orbit out to here and the orbit is going to be this shape so it's a projection of what the shape will be if I do that maneuver so let's do that I want to actually work on this a little bit and as you can see the axis points the projected axis points move a little bit as uh, the orbit starts to approach its circular point so as you can see my apoapsis at the new point after the burn will be 494 and it'll be over in this position and my periapsis will be 492 and will be over in this position. And again, we did that by, and I'll just do it again to demonstrate, I'll delete that node. We created a maneuver node at our apoapsis point. Great. We grabbed the anchor that represents our prograde vector and we just pulled on it a little bit to extend the orbit out. And keep going. Whoops. And as you'll notice, when we get to the point where the orbit starts to circularize, the projected apses points will flip position because that's what would actually happen when you go beyond the circular point. The apses will flip because you're continuing to extend the orbit out beyond circular. The low point in the orbit then becomes the high point and vice versa. It's a lot to take in. You kind of have to play with it a little bit. Um, but uh, yeah. Let's, uh, let's give it a shot. Uh, let's see where we're at. 494, 495. Okay, that's a good maneuver. So let's, uh, we'll make this burn. Um, what we can do to set up for this burn in advance is we can maneuver our ship. Now, I'm controlling the ship from the map screen just by using the nav ball, which is what you should do generally, uh, especially when you're doing you know big orbital maneuvers like this. And we want to find the blue... Uh, identifier on the nav ball. Now that represents our target vector for the maneuver. And that will actually line up with the prograde vector once our ship is actually on this side of the planet. Now that brings me to another point. Our ship is still way over here. If we hover over the maneuver point, it's T minus 19 minutes and change. I don't know about you, but I don't want to wait around here for 19 minutes while this thing circles the planet. So what we're going to do is we're going to time warp. Time warp is done by pressing the period key, and you're going to see a little message up here. So there it is, time warp times 5. We can click it again, times 10. And we're up to 50. And 50 is good. You can go beyond it. Uh, but you got to be careful that you don't time warp too much because you can accidentally miss your node. So as you can see, we're accelerating towards our burn point by basically making time go faster. Now I'm going to slow down the time warp as I get close. There we go. All right, we're about 45 seconds from the burn. So what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that my target vector is lined up and nice and in place. And the estimated burn time, it's a little tough to see, but it says 10 seconds. What that means is I want to start that burn at T minus 5. Why is that? Well, let's say we had a longer burn. Let's say we were burning to um, go out to a really wide orbit, like out towards near where the moon is or some sort of uh, geostationary orbit. Uh, the burn time would be a lot longer. Now, in order to get the orbit uh, fairly accurate and exact, uh, and I'm just going to start the burn here, throttle up. There we go. We're burning. Four, three, two. Going to cut the throttle back a little bit. There we go. All right. Not bad. Not bad. 501. All right. Close. Close enough. All right. So as you can see, what we've done is we've made our orbit bigger. All right, our orbit is now bigger. We're making a wider turn around the planet. 
and thus the circle's overall diameter is bigger. So we're at about a 500 kilometer orbit. Let's go and look. And you can see we're definitely a lot farther from the planet than we once were. Mm -hmm. Now, a couple of points about what we just did. Uh, there's some terminology when it comes to these kind of orbital corrections and orbital maneuvers that we do. The one we just did was a small example of what's called a Hohmann transfer orbit. What that means is we burn prograde at a certain point. It raises our apoapsis up to a point where we then do another burn at that new apoapsis point to raise our periapsis up to the uh, new circular point. So we try to get these close together, and that's called a Hohmann transfer. What it basically means is we transferred from a lower orbit, that is a lower orbital altitude, up to a higher orbital altitude. Okay, so that's an example of uh, one, um, one maneuver we can do. Uh, we can also do something called changing inclination. Now, what is inclination? Well, if you look uh, close to the planet, I've got something orbiting. It's just a kind of a satellite of sorts <clears throat> called the uh, GOES-6 probe um, orbiting the planet. However, it's not orbiting kind of in the same way as these two other things, right? It's kind of on, an, it's on a, a really weird angle compared to everything else. This orbit is what we would call an inclined orbit reason why we call it inclined is because it's moving on an angle that has a certain inclination from the equator. These two orbits here that you see, the orbit of our ship in blue and my space station here, are called equatorial orbits, or orbits that lie on the equator of the planet. And you derive the inclination from when the orbit is actually on a different plane that is a different angle from the equator. So this satellite here is actually on an inclined orbit. So what if we want to put our ship on a slightly inclined orbit? Well, that's uh, pretty easy to do as well, and we can do it just about anywhere. It all depends on the kind of shape you want to do. So let's just pick an arbitrary point, let's say here. We're going to create another maneuver Right? And we're not going to pull on the prograde or retrograde vectors at all, but we're going to pull on one of these purple icons. These are what's called normal and anti-normal. Don't ask me why they're called that. I honestly don't know. All I know is you're basically burning at a 90 degree angle upward or downward from your velocity vector. So we're going to yank on this a little bit to increase our inclination. And as you can see, as you can see, the projected orbit now has a bit of an angle compared to what our orbit currently is. So let's pull on this a little bit more. There we go. All right? And now, with that maneuver in place, if we go and look at our nav ball, I'm just going to spin this around here a little bit. That's on the other side right there. The blue target vector is literally in between the prograde and retrograde vectors. Okay? And if I go out of map mode and I look at the ship, look where the ship is pointing. The ship is pointing north, directly north with reference to the planet. So if we're orbiting this way, we're actually going to aim to burn this way. And this is going to angle our, our orbit on a slight incline. Right? So let's actually speed up uh, time to the burn. And I, th I don't think that's going to be just a one second burn. So as we get closer, I believe this will fix itself. All right. Slow down the time warp. All right, about 20 seconds away from it, so that's fine. 
we're still pointing towards our target vector, so that's great. And we're about 15 seconds from the node. Gonna wait until we're about maybe one or two seconds away. I guess this thing still does think it's only a one second burn time, so that's fine. Three, two, one, we'll throttle up. And as you can see, our orbit is now changing. Let's throttle back. Perfect. Okay. We've now inclined our orbit. So I'm going to get rid of that maneuver. And as you can see, our orbit is now slightly angled. And uh, we've also messed our periapsis up, or our apoapsis up a little bit, but that's, you know, we're not going to worry about that. Um, so yeah, that's uh, some of the basic maneuvers you can do, and you can also do the reverse of this if you want to uh, flatten this orbit out. In fact, let's do that. And we're going to do this with a frame of reference. See my space station here is on a perfectly equatorial orbit. I know that for a fact. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to set this as a target. And then now what this shows me is two new points on the orbit that correspond to each other. We have what's called the ascending node. And on this side, we have what's called the descending node. Now what those mean is the ascending node, <clears throat> let's say, just for argument's sake, even though there's no real directions, you know, up, down, left, right, in space, let's say that below the planet is down and above the planet up here is up. And as you can see, our orbit, the ship, is going in this direction, right? It's going counterclockwise around the planet. And since it's going above the plane, and for argument's sake, we're calling the orbit of my space station the reference plane. It's going above the plane. It's ascending above the plane. We call that the ascending node because that's the point where it changes between below to up. If I angle this this way, you see that the two orbits literally intersect at that point. And the reverse is true for this side. The descending node is the point where the orbit goes from above the plane to below the plane of reference. Now, why are these points uh, important? Well, let's say we want to match the planes. I'm not going to do an, um, an inclination change maneuver here if I want to line up with this, because if I change my inclination here, my orbit is just going to become more lopsided in a completely new axis, and that's not what we want. We're going to be a lot further from where we want to be. So what we're going to do is, since we're already on the ascending section of the plane, over here at the descending node, I'm going to create a maneuver. Now something you may also notice, before I create this maneuver, I want to highlight something. At each of these node points, you see a, um, a number represented in degrees. That number is the difference in angle between the two orbits at those nodes. So it's a 6.4 degree difference, right? If you know your geometry you know, angles of, you know, degrees of angles, things like that. So it's a 6.4 degree difference. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is at the descending node, I'm just going to zoom in a little bit here. I'm going to create a maneuver. And we're going to burn towards the normal again. There we go. All right. And as you look at that, look at what the ascending and descending nodes do. They're shifting a little bit. And as you look, the, project, the new projected nodes are getting closer and closer to zero. If we want to match these planes and bring the inclination exactly the same as our target, uh, there we go, a little more, a little too much. No, maybe that's, maybe that's perfect. Yeah, I think that's perfect, actually, 0, 0.0. So that's pretty close. That's... You know, it's, it's 0, 0.0, probably 0 0.001, something like that. So those nodes change to show that the difference in angle between the orbits 
is now a lot smaller. It's very nearly zero. It's almost it's it's close enough to zero that the game basically thinks it's zero, which is which is what we want. So what we're gonna do, and is again this is gonna involve another burn towards the normal, and we're already very nearly pointing in that direction. So we're gonna aim towards our target vector on the nav ball once again. And now I'm going to accelerate time just to get us over here because it's still about 27 minutes towards till that burn speed up to 100 times speed. Slow it down, slow down, slow down. All right. Yeah, give it a little bit. Right about there. Okay. So we're 30 seconds from the burn. So again, as you're going to see, we're going to adjust our blue line, our actual orbit, to match the projected orbit. And the goal is going to be to have the inclination be equal to that of the targeted orbit. So we're coming up on the node. Pretty soon here, and burn. All right, and as you can see, the blue line is starting to line up with our orange line. I'm just going to throttle back now to get a little bit of precision. It's not going to be exact, but we'll be all right. All right, there we go. All right, almost perfect. Pretty close. Not, not perfectly perfect, but pretty close. All right cut my throttle make sure <clears throat> so you can see this is actually it's 0 0.1 but whatever close enough still All right so now we've matched orbits with this and those are those are a couple of examples of uh, things you can do in fact what I can also show you is the benefit of burning for your specific maneuvers at the different uh, apses uh, so let's say we've raised our orbit up, we've played with our inclination a little bit, now we want to uh, bring our orbit back down, but we want to do so efficiently. So <clears throat> we're looking here, here is our apoapsis point. Like I said, our apoapsis is the highest point in our orbit at an altitude relative to the planet that we're on. So what we want to do is set up a maneuver node right at that point, and now, instead of, since we don't want to raise our altitude, we want to lower it, we want to lower this orbit, we're going to burn retrograde. And if I pull on the retrograde handle, as you can see, the orange line is starting to shrink. So I'm going to yank on this a little bit. I want to, oops, I don't want to do that, actually. In fact, let me, uh, just to make this a little bit easier, I want to unset that target. <clears throat> rendezvous with other things in orbit is another video but uh, as we're playing with this orbit I want to bring my periapsis down so that's about 200 I want to go lower than that all right that's about a hundred okay hundreds good we'll bring our orbit down to about a hundred kilometers all right so that's lowering our orbit pretty significantly so just like before with the other maneuvers, we're going to orient our spacecraft from the map screen. All right. Oops. We need to find our target vector. All right. Get it, <clears throat> get it on there as close as possible. Sometimes it drifts a little bit. I notice I'm using SAS on... I talked about SAS in the first video. Just, um, you know, it makes controlling the ship in orbit quite a bit easier. All right? And just as before, we're going to time warp. Give me 100. Just to get ourselves over to this point, because, like I said, I don't have 45 minutes to just sit here and wait. Okay. Too fast. Yep, we don't want to do that. I don't want to overshoot it. All right, and there, let's cut to zero. Speed back up a little bit. There we go. 
And funnily enough, it's not telling me my estimated burn time, so I'm just going to kind of guess it a little bit here. Uh, I believe this burn would probably be about maybe 15 seconds or so, so I'm going to wait until there's about 10 seconds left on the clock. In fact, I'm going to speed up just a little bit more. 30, 20, okay, good. And I'm going to burn. So throttle up. And I was pretty much right. Maybe a little bit off. And we'll cut throttles there. So we've now lowered our periapsis to that point. Now, basically what we're doing is the exact reverse of what we did to get out to this orbit. We're burning opposite direction to lower one side of the orbit. We're getting to the other apsis point, and we're burning in the opposite direction again to lower the other point down to bring our orbit back into circular. So just as before, I'm going to create a node here. I'm going to pull on the prograde handle to bring the orbit down. Oops, too much. Right about there. About 94, 95. Okay, that's good. Let's point our ship at the appropriate target. There it is. Bit of a fine art to get these things lined up perfectly if you want the uh you want your orbits to stay good. <clears throat> Trust me, it's uh, a lot of trial and error and a lot of quick saving, things like that. So, just as before, we're going to warp to this new area. Give me 100 times speed. There we go. Warping the fabric of space and time, because that's what all good simulators do. And we'll slow it down. There should be a short-ish burn again, so I'm going to stop this right at around 20 seconds. There we go. A little bit of a correction to my vector, and let's say we're going to burn right about now. Throttle up. And we'll throttle down. Pretty much perfect, right? 89, eh, overshot it a little bit, but that's all right. And 94 for the pair, for the apoapsis. So we've now lowered this orbit back down, and we're, if we look, we're a lot closer to the planet than we were when we were way out there. So that's pretty much the basics of orbiting um, and orbital maneuvers, things of that nature. Um, you know, a lot of this stuff is really, really important when it comes to, uh, let's say you want to go to the moon, and I think that'll be my next video. <clears throat> but um, yeah, uh, that's pretty much the basics of orbiting. Uh, one last thing I want to do is uh, let's uh, we'll show you what a deorbit and reentry looks like. Now, deorbit sounds exactly like what it means. We want to undo the orbit. We want to make it so that our orbit is no longer in orbit and is instead going to fall back to the planet. So how do we do that? Very simply, if we don't really care where we land, and in this case we don't, we just need to orient our ship so that we burn towards the retrograde, and we just need to fire the engine. As you can see, my periapsis is dipping down, dipping down, and all of a sudden, my periapsis is now gone. And if you look, the blue line is going to intersect with the ground. What does that inevitably mean? Like I said in my first video, what goes up must come down. We are going to come down and land this guy. So, um... Currently in the game, you really don't have to worry about like ent entry heating effects and things like that. What I'm actually going to do, though, just for the sake of simulation and realism, let me make sure I'm time on times one here. I'm going to go to my view, um, 
as you can see, my ship is, you know, kind of fancy. I got external fuel tanks and solar panels, things like that. Just to reduce the amount of debris that happens when I re-enter, I'm going to retract my solar panels. I have a hot key that allows me to do that. Um, and also what I'm going to do is... Actually, am I going to land on the dark side of the planet? Almost. It'll be light out where I'm going to land as soon as I get there. <clears throat> but, um, yeah, so uh, we retracted our panels, blah, 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 preparing for landing, etc., etc. Let's get that set up like that. We're oriented ourselves level in relation to the planet. Right? So we're level. And you can see our altitude is going down, so eventually we're going to enter the atmosphere. What I want to do now is I want to kind of point my nose up a little bit. And uh, my ship is right now currently equipped with RCS thrusters, so I'm going to engage those. I'm going to start translating backwards a little bit, and then I'm going to detach my pod. So technically that pod is detached from it. There we go. All right, and now my pod is kind of moving around by itself and my engine is now floating away. This, uh, this is fine, right? We're gonna re-enter the atmosphere basically just like this. Whoops, stay still. There you go. So my engine is gonna burn up into the atmosphere. We don't need that anymore. All we care about is the pod. So uh, we're going to start descending into the atmosphere shortly. Um, I've neglected to mention where the atmosphere actually begins around the planet Kerbin. It begins at 70,000 meters or 70 kilometers. So if you're ever playing around in space and your, your orbit is going to descend into the atmosphere, just know that the atmosphere is going to start slowing you down and it could pull you all the way down to the ground. Um, but in our case, that's exactly what we want because we want to go home. You know, we've had enough time. We've had enough fun playing in space today. So let's go home, right? Um, we're about to enter the atmosphere. I'm actually going to speed up to the point where we do. As you can see, I'm getting lower, lower. <clears throat> and now that I'm in the atmosphere, the time warp won't let me go. Whoops. Let's not have it do that. Righto. And I want to keep this bottom part, the blunt side, towards the atmosphere. Uh, on a real capsule, this side would have the heat shield. And as you're going to see as we start to enter the atmosphere, the uh, there's going to be some heat buildup on here. So we're still descending into the 60,000s. I'm just going to speed up again here a little bit. So we're in the atmosphere. There we go. Keep on going, descending below 50,000. And, you know, we're not descending too steeply or too shallowly. You know, we're kind of letting the air of the atmosphere bleed off our speed a little bit. And as we descend into the thicker atmosphere, it's going to bleed it off even more. You kind of see my ship wobbling a little bit. That's just the air kind of keeping it oriented in the same location. So I'm going to slow this down. And we're to the point now we're going to start to see some heating effects. Notice how... The familiar fireball is starting to form around my ship. This is going to start glowing here in a minute. So we're blazing in like a meteor. And I mean, this is just a result of the fact that we're going through the atmosphere so fast, we're actually causing the air to catch on fire. And there we go. My heat shield is starting to glow. I have a feeling my parachute might deploy prematurely. There it goes. That's, I don't know why that actually happens. I think it's a bug with that parachute. <coughs> but uh, under normal circumstances, that parachute would be burned to shreds and would be useless, but that's fine. It actually is serving to slow us down even more. And we're slowed down to the point where uh, we're actually <coughs> uh, not burning up anymore. And we're... 
just getting to the point where we want to slow down sufficiently and we're going to come down and land. I'm just speeding up time a little bit because, you know, space is big, planets are big, and it takes a while to come back down. So we're at times four speed. My parachute is going to deploy at 500 meters. Oops. Okay. What you just saw there was a um, a current bug with the time warp system. When you time warp within an atmosphere, it's not only warping time, it's also warping physics to actually simulate quicker. And what happens is sometimes the forces that get exerted are a little too much and things can break. So what you just saw there was my parachute breaking off. But that's fine. Um, it's a simulator. We have infinite spacecraft and infinite astronauts that we can sacrifice for the greater good. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, all you need to know about orbits and orbital maneuvers while in space. Um, thank you all for watching. Um, I didn't mention it on my last video, but uh, if you enjoy these, please subscribe. Uh, you know, leave comments below. And uh, follow me on Twitter if you'd like, twitter.com slash ravagetalon. Uh, and you're already on youtube.com slash ravagetalon. Uh, so again, subscribe, follow me, and uh, you guys have a good day.